It was a late October evening, the kind where the wind whispers through the trees like secrets spoken in the dark. I had just finished up a long day at the office, and the drive home was supposed to be routine, uneventful. The road was familiar, a straight shot through the woods that bordered our small town. The moon was a thin crescent, barely casting enough light to pierce the canopy of looming branches that arched over the road. As I drove, the radio crackled with static, the DJ's voice fading in and out as if struggling to maintain connection. I reached to adjust the dial when a sudden movement caught my eye, a fleeting shadow that darted across the road. I slammed on the brakes, heart racing, eyes straining through the darkness. Nothing. Just the whispering trees and the faint rustle of leaves stirred by the wind. Shaking off the unease, I continued, the engines hum a comforting constant in the unsettling quiet of the night. The further I drove, the denser the wood seemed to become, the road narrowing as if being swallowed by the encroaching darkness. It was then I noticed the fog, creeping across the road like tendrils of smoke, thick and unyielding. Visibility dropped sharply, and I slowed to a crawl, headlights barely cutting through the oppressive gray. My breath fogged up the windshield, adding to the claustrophobic feel of the enveloping mist. That's when I heard it, a sound barely audible over the sound of the car's engine. A soft, mournful wail that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. I stopped the car, the silence of the engine making the wailing clearer, more distinct. It was a woman's voice, filled with such sorrow and pain that it chilled me to the bone. Hello? I called out, my voice sounding oddly muffled in the fog. No answer, just the echo of my own voice and the continued wailing. With a deep breath, I opened the car door, the cold air biting at my skin. The ground was wet, leaves sticking to my shoes as I ventured a little way into the woods, following the sound of the crying. It seemed to move, leading me deeper into the forest, always just a step ahead as if beckoning me to follow. The trees seemed to close in around me, their branches like twisted arms reaching out to snag my clothes. The crying grew louder, more desperate. I pushed forward, the underbrush scratching at my legs, my heart pounding in my chest. Then, suddenly, I stumbled into a clearing. There, in the middle of the clearing, stood an old house. It looked abandoned, its windows dark, the paint peeling to reveal the rotting wood beneath. The crying had stopped, and in its place, a suffocating silence fell, heavy and foreboding. I approached the house, curiosity overcoming my fear. The front door was ajar, swinging gently in the wind. Hello? I called again, stepping inside. The air inside was stale, thick with dust and decay. My flashlight beam cut through the darkness, revealing old, moldy furniture covered with white sheets. As I moved deeper into the house, the floorboards creaking under my weight, I felt a sudden chill, a drop in temperature that made my breath visible. My light flickered, shadows dancing on the walls, creating grotesque shapes that seemed to move of their own accord. Up ahead, at the end of the hallway, a door stood slightly open, a sliver of darkness beckoning. I approached, each step heavy with dread. I pushed the door open, and inside, I saw nothing but an empty room, bathed in shadows. The floor was littered with old newspapers, yellowed and brittle, and against the far wall, a broken mirror hung, its shattered surface reflecting the fragmented darkness. I stepped inside, the air growing colder with each step. My flashlight swept across the room catching on something in the corner. It was a doll, old and tattered, its porcelain face cracked and one eye missing. It sat propped against the wall, dressed in a faded Victorian gown. Something about it sent a chill down my spine, its remaining eye seeming to follow me as I moved around the room. 
I reached out, hesitantly, to touch it, but as I did, a cold hand gripped my wrist. I spun around, my heart in my throat, but there was nothing there, just the empty room and the lingering touch of ice on my skin. I pulled my hand back quickly, backing away from the doll. That's when I noticed the walls. They weren't just covered in peeling paint but in deep, gouging scratches, as if someone or something had tried desperately to escape. As I turned back to leave, the door slammed shut with a thunderous bang. I rushed to it, tugging at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. Panic rose in my chest, a tight, suffocating feeling. Who's there? I called out, my voice cracking with fear. No answer came, just the sound of my own ragged breathing. Then, softly at first, the crying started again, echoing through the house. It was closer this time, filled with a palpable sadness that weighed on my soul. I turned, flashlight scanning the dark corners of the room. Who are you? I whispered into the darkness. What do you want from me? The crying stopped abruptly, replaced by a low, menacing laugh that seemed to come from everywhere at once. The temperature dropped further, my breath visible in the air, and I could see my breath fogging in the cold. Shadows began to move along the walls, coalescing into the form of a woman. She was ethereal, her features blurred and shifting, her eyes hollow pits of despair. I am trapped, she whispered, her voice a hollow echo that reverberated through the room. Trapped by my own sorrow, bound to these walls by grief. Her form drifted closer, the temperature dropping with each passing second. Help me, she pleaded, reaching out a hand that was more mist than flesh. How can I help you? I asked, the cold seeping into my bones. What needs to be done? Her eyes, deep and sorrowful, met mine. Free me, she said. Release my spirit, and you too shall find a way out. Her words hung in the air, heavy with an unspoken warning. I nodded, unsure of how to proceed but desperate to escape the oppressive atmosphere of the house. Tell me what to do, I urged, my voice steady despite the fear that gripped me. She pointed to the doll, its one-eyed gaze unsettling in the flickering light of my flashlight. It holds the key, she said. Destroy it, and you break the chains that bind me here. I approached the doll hesitantly, each step reluctant. Its eyes seemed to watch me, a malevolent glint in the dim light. I reached for it, my hands trembling, and as I touched it, a surge of emotions flooded through me, pain, loss, anger, all overwhelming and raw. Gathering all my courage, I lifted the doll. Its porcelain was cold, almost burning against my skin. I knew what I had to do. With a deep breath, I hurled the doll against the broken mirror. The impact was explosive, the sound deafening in the silent house. Shards of glass and porcelain flew through the air like shrapnel. As the pieces settled, a wind picked up in the room howling through the broken windows and open doors. The woman's spirit appeared again, this time less defined, her form dissipating into the air. Thank you, she whispered, her voice fading with her form. Thank you. The house began to settle, the oppressive atmosphere lifting slightly. But as I made my way back to the door, ready to leave this nightmare behind, I realized the story wasn't over. There were deeper secrets held within these walls, secrets that whispered in the dark, calling out to be uncovered. The door, once jammed, now opened with an eerie ease, creaking slowly as I pushed against the old wood. The house, though somewhat less oppressive, still held a chilling atmosphere, whispering of hidden corners and forgotten stories. I stepped out into the hallway, 
the air still thick with dust and the remnant chill of the spirit's departure. As I moved through the house, the silence was profound, each step echoing off the barren walls. The air seemed to thrum with a subtle vibration, as if the house itself was slowly awakening from a long slumber. I couldn't shake the feeling that eyes were watching me from the shadows, observing my every move with bated breath. I descended the creaky stairs to the ground floor, my flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. The living room was just as I had left it, the furniture draped in white sheets like ghosts frozen in time. However, now, the atmosphere seemed charged, the sheets fluttering slightly as if stirred by an unfelt wind. My light caught something under the edge of a sheet, a small box, wooden and old, with intricate carvings that seemed to dance in the flickering light. Cautiously, I approached, pulling the sheet back to reveal the box fully. It was locked, a heavy iron padlock securing it shut, its surface etched with symbols that made my skin crawl. The sense of dread filled the air, thick and palpable. I reached out, fingers barely brushing the cold metal of the lock when a sharp, static shock jolted through me. I recoiled, hands stinging, heart racing. It was clear that this box held something significant, something potent and possibly dangerous. Drawing a deep breath, I examined the lock more closely, noticing that it didn't require a key but a combination. The symbols, I realized with a start, corresponded to numbers, a code hidden within ancient sigils. My mind raced, piecing together the clues from the woman's spirit and the eerie presence still lingering in the house. I adjusted the lock, aligning the symbols with the numbers they represented, my hands trembling as I worked. With a final click, the lock opened, swinging heavily aside. I lifted the lid of the box slowly, apprehensively, half expecting something horrific to spring out. Inside, nestled within a bed of old, moth-eaten velvet, lay a book. Its cover was leather, worn and cracked, with a single, unblinking eye embossed in the center. The eye seemed to stare into my soul, its gaze piercing and all-knowing. I hesitated, then, compelled by a force I couldn't resist, I took the book into my hands. The moment my skin touched the leather, the house groaned, a sound deep and mournful, resonating through the foundation. I opened the book, the pages yellowed and brittle with age. The writing was in a language I didn't recognize, the letters swirling, alive on the page, as if inked in shadow. As I turned the pages, the air around me grew colder, the shadows deeper. The house seemed to be holding its breath, waiting for something inevitable and terrible. I could feel a presence, growing stronger with each word I deciphered, a darkness coiling around my heart. I read aloud, the words sounding strange and arcane on my tongue. With each syllable, the house trembled, the wind howling through the broken windows like the cries of the damned. I felt eyes upon me, not just watching but piercing, as if trying to see into the very depths of my being. The room darkened, the light from my flashlight dimming as if being swallowed by an unseen void. I continued to read, my voice growing stronger, more confident as the power of the words filled me lending me a strength I had not known I possessed. But as I neared the end of the passage, the atmosphere shifted, the air charged with a sudden, electric tension. I stopped, looking up from the book. The shadows around me were moving, coalescing into a form, large and imposing, its features obscured but its intent clear. 
It was something ancient, something evil, something that had been waiting for its chance to rise. And as it stepped forward, the house shaking with its every move, I realized what I had done. I had not merely read from an old book, I had awakened something that should have remained asleep. The looming figure emerged from the shadows, its form more defined now, a silhouette of dread and ancient malevolence. The air around me thickened, heavy with the scent of decay and the weight of unspoken centuries. My heart pounded, each beat echoing loudly in the oppressive silence of the old house. I see you, reader of the forbidden, the figure spoke, its voice a cacophony of whispers, like leaves rustling in a dead wind. The room grew colder, the shadows dancing along the walls as if alive. I clutched the book to my chest, realizing too late the power it contained, the door it had opened. What are you? I managed to ask my voice trembling with fear and cold. The figure advanced, its movements fluid, unnaturally graceful. I am what has been waiting, it replied, the room seeming to darken with its words. I am what lies beneath, forgotten by time, fed by the darkness. Desperation gripped me as I backed away, stumbling over a loose floorboard, the figure halted, and for a moment, its eyes glowed a deep, fiery red. You have awakened me, it said, and thus you shall serve as my herald, my bridge to the living world. I knew I couldn't let this entity escape, couldn't let it unleash its darkness upon the world. With a clarity born of terror, I understood what I needed to do. No, I said my voice steadier now. I will not let you pass. I opened the book again, flipping through the ancient pages until I found what I was looking for, a way to reverse the summoning. The words blurred before my eyes, the language arcane, but the power within them pulsed, alive and waiting. I began to read aloud, each word a defiant shout against the creeping dark. The entity roared, a sound that shook the house to its foundations. Wind whipped through the room, the pages of the book fluttering wildly in my hands. But I held on, speaking the words with all the strength I could muster. As I spoke the final syllable, a blinding light filled the room, emanating from the book itself. The figure screamed, its form dissolving into the light, disintegrating before my eyes. The light grew, encompassing everything, burning away the shadows, cleansing the room with its purity. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, the light vanished. The book fell silent in my hands, its cover now a plain, unmarked leather. The air cleared, the oppressive atmosphere lifting, and I took a deep, shuddering breath. I looked around. The house was silent, the shadows normal once more, hiding nothing but dust and age. Exhausted, I sat down, the book beside me. I knew I needed to protect it, ensure that it would never again fall into the wrong hands. Its secrets were too dangerous, its power too great. As dawn broke, light streaming through the cracked windows, I felt a sense of peace. The entity was gone, banished back to wherever it had come from. I stood, weary but resolute, and left the house, the book tucked securely under my arm. Outside, the world seemed brighter the air fresher. I looked back at the house once, a solemn reminder of the night's terrors, then turned away. I had survived, but more importantly, I had protected the world from an ancient evil, hidden in plain sight. 
I walked away from the house, the morning sun warming my back, the book a heavy weight under my arm. Whatever the future held, I was ready. After all, I had faced the darkness and emerged victorious, a guardian of secrets meant to be forgotten, a keeper of stories too true to tell. 